Another year of doing what we do best, clearing the path to progress. No job too big or too small. Whether requiring months of planning or stepping up to handle an emergency, here's to the team of experts at Priestly Demolition for a stellar 2018. Some of the projects began years ago, but wrapped up this year. The Morningside Bridge demolition was complicated. Four lanes in six spans, two of them over ecologically sensitive areas. But phase one had gone well, despite inclement weather and the challenge of lifting the massive girders from such a height. Well, round two, no different than round one, except time constraint. Uh, they want it done a lot faster, so we had to double shift night and day. We were able to see what we did last time and how we can make it more efficient, productive, and uh, where we can iron out all the things to make it safer. As with phase one, each span is attacked individually, removing the massive girders one by one. We let her go out far enough so that when we swing, it's past the crate. One down, four to go. As each girder is removed, it is processed on site and the concrete hauled away. I'm so proud of the crew here, the guys, they've done amazing. Coming into the second phase of this job, the customer reached out and they really needed to expedite the schedule and, and that's where Priestly shines. The success of this job really goes to the fact that it's, it's not just the people on site that are working hard every day and, and getting this work done, but it's the pre-planning, it's the engineering, logistics, like we move a lot of equipment into a job like this, we get the job done in four weeks and, and it's a lot of effort on everyone's part. Moving equipment falls to some of the unsung heroes on the PDI team, the drivers. It's probably snowing on Sarnia Way. Well, more than likely. Uh, we're just on our way out to uh, Strathroy to pick up a big machine. It's a specialized skill requiring special equipment, but it would be impossible to service multiple clients without the ability to keep the machines circulating. When they narrow the lanes down and you've got just a few inches each side as you're going through and you know, you've got people in the construction zone, you know, you don't want to be hitting the barrels and knocking the barrels into the construction guys and all that stuff. So and that was the, the biggest challenge. So we're on the 401, we're just past London, heading towards Woodstock. Things are going good, weather's good. Load's looking good. We should be there probably in about two hours. No problems, no injuries, no destroyed vehicles. It's all good. That's a good day. Some jobs come up suddenly demanding crews be mobilized for emergency relief. Floodwaters ravaged Port Bruce earlier this week, flooding basements, swallowing roads, but no one seemed to see this coming today, the Imperial Road Bridge collapsing. We got the call from the MTO, and of course it's very sensitive this time of year. It's fish habitat, so it's really important to the Conservation Authority and the town that we get the river back to normal operation. What the bridge is, is it's in three spans. So what, what we've got is one complete span is completely in the water. We've got to remove that span. And our plan will be to enter the water, segregate the eight beams that make up span two, and then pull them out one at a time onto the shore where we can process them and recycle them. These hungry machines and their eager operators chew into the sections lying on both banks of the river. But the big challenge lies in the middle section, in the water. I was out there with the machine in the middle of the river and you know, you just have to feel around and make sure you're always in the center of the bridge because the last thing you want is to slide off and you know, get, get yourself in a situation that's not safe. And getting started is the hardest part, getting the holes and finding out where you are between each girder. But once you get a gap going, then you can just follow that and work your way all the way back. 
Once the concrete has been hammered out, the Link Belt 8000 lugs these massive beams out of the water for them to be processed safely over land. The girders are about 10 tons each, so we'll have to do the rest today. We'll take the 8000 apart again, and we'll float it around the other side, put it back together again so you can pull out the girders on the far side. Can you put your bucket out a bit further, and then you get a bite after. We got the three different materials that will come out of this. There'll be your post-tension wire. We'll keep that separated. You'll have your rebar, and then of course the concrete. We are uh, hauling the concrete up the road. They've got a pit. We're crushing this concrete into gravel for the county as well. We had brought the 8,000 from the uh, south side around here to remove the last big pieces of the girders. We used some of the larger pieces of concrete just to sort of stabilize the bank. Everyone's happy to see a quick response and a clean slate to, uh, to move on from there. A clean slate is what they looked for in Goderich, home to the largest salt mine in the world. But the infrastructure is badly in need of an upgrade, and it's time the old head frame hits the dirt. I've been here before. I was here a few years back, and we took head frame number one. When we tore the first one down, we put up protection plates to protect the debris from falling down on the buildings below. We're gonna use the same system with a little bit of modifications to it. The work we're doing here is very, very dangerous work. We got buildings around us, we got a mine that's operating around us, there's traffic, there's people, so it's an ongoing thing here. Safety is huge and it should be. The crew starts by quickly stripping away the doghouse, the exterior stairways and the elevator shaft, clearing the way for installation of the protective shields. Weston's putting in the last protection platform section, and then tomorrow we'll bring our machine in here and uh, hit it hard. And the team begins to bring down this aging behemoth. Oh, well, we're chewing away at it, and it's going pretty good right now. I want to keep that momentum going. The machine is working fine. The debris is falling where I want it to fall. The job takes several days, gradually reducing the head frame to rubble. So today the, the crew's wrapping up. It was a successful undertaking for sure. And once the demolition started, it was maybe five days and 100 feet of concrete down to the ground. Bringing down aging infrastructure is the foundation of Priestley's business. The old refinery boilers at Suncor in Oakville were just taking up space until PDI came along to clear the way. These are like three things left of a uh, refinery. These are the boilers. This is the last of it. Once it's time to go, we'll cut all the other bolts, leave this one, leave that one over there, and we use this as the pivot point. If we don't cut this flat edge, you have the, uh, the possibility of it rolling a bit. Once all the bolts are cut, we'll leave those two in, push it from behind, and hopefully she lands right on the concrete pillow there. We put in a pile of rubble to help dampen the impact of the vessel coming over. And That's supposed to cushion, so once it does hit, it'll shockwave through that before it hits the ground and whatever's underneath it. We're pretty much ready to rock here. Thursday, March 22nd, this tower is a little bit different. It's up in the air on a concrete pedestal with six legs. So we're gonna remove two legs with the excavator and shear, and then we're gonna use an X burst to detonate the third leg, and then uh, you're gonna see it go timber. An X burst is an explosive that contains its blast to minimize debris spread. The idea is to weaken the column sufficiently, not explode it. 
Oh. He had X burst. Did what it was supposed to do, but there was still a little bit of concrete left in there. And so we ended up using the big machine to give it a little push. team moves on to the final tower. It's a two-parter, but comes down with a few gentle nudges. It's moving! It's yeah. moving! It's coming! A lot of exciting energy happens just from the whole chaos. We don't do it for the money, we do it for the thrill. Adrenaline junkies. <laughs> <laughs> big noise, big machines. That's part of the fun. But keeping these monsters on the go requires a full-time crew of specialists. My name's James Goldie. I do fleet maintenance at Priestley Demolition. Antonio Barbero, heavy equipment mechanic. I'm John Cotter and I'm a heavy equipment mechanic at Priestley Demolition. I uh, look after all the uh, compact equipment at Priestley Demolition, the, the Bobcats and the mini excavators, all of their attachments. They have to uh, be inspected every time they come into the shop, just doing preventive maintenance, but then I'm looking for structural failures and that these machines only last X amount of hours in the conditions that we run them in. It can be a hydraulic problem. It could be fuel problems. We're coming into the fall, batteries, fuel filters, water in the fuel tank. We get a lot of blown hydraulic hoses, broken fittings, uh, missing teeth, broken pins, hammer grease, because the guys may run out of grease. Those are our day-to-day -day things. We could field some days 10, 20, 30 calls. It just depends on what's going on. Maintenance and assembly. The machines don't always get to the site ready to go. So a specialist needs to be there before the operators arrive. We're just going to assemble the equipment. The machine has to go together today so they can work tomorrow. So okay. if there's any screw ups, we got to figure it out before tomorrow. The Crusher guys, they're our favorite phone calls because they break a lot of stuff, especially Big Freddy. He's always needy. He makes sure that he phone calls, he emails, he bid to win, then he follows up with another phone call to make sure that we meet all his needs. As usual, some of the trickiest jobs are the ones in the downtown Toronto core, with little room to maneuver, even less to process debris. You're bringing in trucks to get material out and bring material in. It's, it's a busy area. We've got to make sure that safety is 100% here as well. The last of the debris is cleaned up. 100% of 5,500 tons of concrete on this job was recycled as well as 110 tons of metal. And of course, there are the bridges. Let's start with a bridge over Highway 7, where the Victoria Street Bridge in Kitchener is standing in the way of highway expansion. The excavators attack the bridge from both sides. 10 a.m., they break through the middle. One team focuses on cleaning up the site, while another attacks the piers and abutments. When the last of the debris has been removed, the road is given a final sweep clean, a full nine hours ahead of schedule. 
Elsewhere in Ontario, spans across Highway 401 took centre stage. The workforce is always massive. The time frames are always tight. Our engineers came up with a system. Uh, we're putting wings on our trailers. So what we do is we bring the trailers on the highway once the closure's in place. We line up the trailers with the deck. So as we're chewing, it catches the debris and diverts it into the center of the trailer. The result, less time spent in cleanup. The debris goes directly to processing. Because it's the 401, it's a busy road. We're really restricted to the amount of time we're allowed to close the, uh, the lanes. Sometimes that means working in stages, as on the Dufferin Street overpass. Here, it's the highway that's getting a rebuild. It's uh, always a challenge to try and get this amount of material both down in one night and cleaned up and all the way in one night. We gotta leave this place spick and span and the team here has done a really good job. Everything has an expiration date and bridges are no exception. Sometimes the deterioration is evident. You don't want to damage the tracks. You don't want to delay the trains. Fines are huge, but we'll get it. We'll be able to do it. Really big bridge, four lanes over six. Lots of concrete to clean up, and the asphalt right below us is brand new, so we got to be very careful when we're, when we're doing our cleanup. out of just six and a half hours. Cleanup's well underway. We're using four loaders, two on each side. All in all, another huge success. Yes, 2018 has been another stellar year at Priestley. And we couldn't have done it without all of you. We can be proud of the work accomplished this year and look forward to continued success in the year ahead. Projects in general are, are getting larger, more complicated, and more difficult. And it's not just about knocking something down anymore. It's about being a one-stop shop for a customer. And knowing that we can meet or even exceed expectations, that's why Pre-Seed Emotion stands apart.